I'm in a small town called Pukara Bay in New Zealand. Behind me is the house of an elderly lady called Hannah McKenzie. I've known Hannah all my life. She's a very close friend of my parents who live just four doors away. In fact, I remember coming to Auntie Hannah's gardens, as we call her, when I was about seven years old and playing in these trees over here. I didn't know a lot about Hannah McKenzie back then. I knew that she was a widow. Her husband had died many years before I was born. About a year ago, I had a call from my mother. She said I should drop in on Auntie Hannah sometime because she was wondering if I'd be interested in a lot of old films that she had stored in a shed at the bottom of her garden. I wasn't expecting much. Hannah described them as a lot of old home movies that her husband Colin had taken. I was expecting to maybe find a bunch of old home movies, drop them off at the film archive on my way home and that would be the end of it. What I found sitting right here was an old chest. I opened the chest and I found the most extraordinary collection of films. These were 35 millimeter films. The tins were rusty. There were strange names on them. Warrior season, films I'd never heard of. I had no way of realizing the significance of these films at the time. We later discovered they were made between the turn of the century and the late 1920s by an extraordinary New Zealander. A man who has now got to join the ranks of the great film pioneers a guy called Colin McKenzie. At the archive, we get a lot of film coming in. It's uh, family parades, babies on lawns. Um, a lot of it's very interesting historically, just dress, fashion and things like this. But uh, Colin McKenzie's collection, on the other hand, is something totally unique. He's got a nice sort of move on there, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I got a call nice from bit. Peter and he wanted to know if I knew anything at all about Colin McKenzie. And I have to say, I didn't know very much. The name wasn't totally unknown to me. I'd come across it in a couple of journals and a couple of old papers. But there was very little solid information to relate to him. Certainly there, was, there were no films that were attributed to him. We were very lucky to get the film in uh, when we did. It, it was starting to deteriorate quite badly, some of the reels. And I think within the five years, if it hadn't been found, it would have disappeared forever. Imagine if a film like Citizen Kane was to suddenly come out of the blue. Uh, really, the discovery of this collection was, was that exciting and that intriguing. It's a treasure trove of um, films that are of major historic importance, not just for New Zealand, but worldwide. This New Zealand filmmaker is going to rank, you know I mean, with the greats like D.W. Griffith. And I think in some ways, infinitely better. I've got to confess, Colin McKenzie was just a name I read somewhere in a book, in a history book, and he didn't have a lot of impact to me until this great discovery of all of his films and the historical research that's gone with it, and now I am just flabbergasted. This is just the greatest film discovery of the last 50 years. Here was this unknown genius who died in obscurity and who now belongs, you know, in the pantheon of, of great cinema artists and innovators.